coming up on this edition of Able Den On Air, both television and radio, WYKR and um, www.orcamedia.net presents um, this special topic, uh, Touch From God. Uh, we focus on uh, a special interview with Chaplain Teresa Mercedes, where she came from, where she's going, despite her mental challenges, all that and much more. Plus, we talk about musical concerts uh, focusing on the deaf and hard of hearing community. All that and much more when Able Den On Air starts right now. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Den Air has been seen in the following publications Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper. Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Able Den On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled, and we focus on abilities despite um, all challenges and all disabilities. Uh, I'm Lauren Seiler. On this special program, we focus on Chaplain Teresa Mercedes, um, where she has gone, where she's going despite her challenges, and we also focus on uh, musical concerts for people with special needs, focusing on the deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, welcome to Abled and On Air, uh, Chaplain Teresa. Thank you for being on today's program. Thank you for having me. Okay. So what are the missions? So let's start, before we get to your event, um, why don't you tell everybody uh, your story? Uh, why did you... Uh, uh, why um, or what what made you uh, become a Christian and despite um, what you've gone through with all your challenges? Go ahead. Well, thank you so much, Larry. Um, wow, that's a, that's, that's a big question right there. So, I, and I want to keep it short because I know we only have a few moments, I mean, minutes um, together. Well, we actually have a half an hour, but go ahead. I know, I know, but this is... <laughs> That's a lot. That's a big question. So I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he did um, come to my life and, and, and save me and, and picked me up from the pits. But um, so your question is what made me uh, decide to become a Christian? And, uh, you know, there's so many parts to it, but I'll, I'll go with the part where we spoke about my mental um, um, struggles, your mental challenges, your mental struggles, my mm -hmm. mental struggles. Yep. In the past, 
Um, I had completely, this was how the Lord, um, I was introduced to the Lord in a powerful way. I guess I can say it that way. I grew up, I grew up as a Catholic, so the name of Jesus was not rare in my household. Um, however, you know, um, I just really would think, you know, God was far, you know, but not, or maybe too busy, you know, but always wanted to talk to him and always felt that he heard me. Um, however, uh, when I was around 22, I completely lost my mind. And when I say I completely lost my mind, it was because, um, certain situations that maybe another time I can go into a little bit more details, um, landed me into like a depressed, um, thinking about, um, a few of my friends that had passed away, um, for the first time, I was faced with the decision I made when I was a teenager, which was having an abortion. Um, I, I was never faced with that um, reality until that age. And it destroyed me to know that I murdered someone. I, I had no idea what an abortion really was. And that began a very depressing, uh, condemning... Take your time. Take your time. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, okay. That... that um, brought me to a um, very condemning time. And as I continue to be so angry at myself and begin to start missing um, <clears throat> the, you know, the fact that I could have been a mother and what I did. And not only that, I started thinking about everybody else that passed away. And um, a little bit of that, I, my past is also, I had gotten into uh, drugs and stuff like that. And at this time I was, uh, stopping all that so my body went into some kind of weird uh reaction that just took my mind into a very dark hole and so basically um, you were at a crossroads in your life correct yeah like pretty much in a crossroad of having to face my past in mm -hmm. a sense you know i felt like my past was um, haunting me all of a sudden, you know, and um, and I couldn't grab a hold of it. I couldn't stop the thoughts in my mind. And um, and I, when I was younger, I did. Um, I I used to have what you know what many would say like maybe different voices in my head, um, but at, at this time I felt like I had like a hundred voices in my head. Like they were just so many that even at sometimes I would just pause and I would just hear the womp womp I mean it was just the most horrible situation and then I became very suicidal you know I just wanted to end everything and um one day my mom um so fast forward a little bit uh my mom was bathing me because my mother had to feed me and bathe me I just had no energy um I couldn't work anymore because it, I would go outside and I would be um afraid and I would I would hallucinate I would think people are laughing or I would just it was just it was like a mental torment um, here and there and the more I stayed home the more I wanted to sleep and I wanted to sleep forever I really I, I used to talk, tell God like God can I sleep like a bear like they sleep for you know a couple of months you know can I just go to sleep and just wake up later but obviously, as humans, we actually do wake up. We cannot hibernate. Mm -hmm. And so my mom, one day, while she was bathing me, I spoke in some demonic language. And what is, uh, for those that don't know, and, and since we're, we're talking about Christianity, um, yes. can you kind of define, um, I know this is a going off on a tangent, because uh, I sent you questions, but what, what is demonic uh, demonic mean for those yeah. that don't know. Yeah, I, I would say I would say a voice that is not love. Okay. Um, an experience that is the opposite of love, and you can't see it. So mm -hmm. if, if I can, I can maybe say it like that. Um, and I'll fast forward a little bit because that's what I told you. I was like, you know, that that's a that was a big question you asked me right there. I I, I wasn't pretty read, um, you know, ready for that, <laughs> that question. But however, I'll fast forward it. At the end of the day, my mom, when that happened to me, my mom took me to church. That's how I got to church. Mm -hmm. The Lord told her she needs to go to church. And I was, I was so desperate for help. I was so desperate to feel better that I said, yeah, I'm going to go. So fast forward. Um, there was an amazing priest there that really helped me and a lot of other beautiful, um, people that, older people, they were much older than me that, and, and some of my friends 
um, which actually one of them is going to be at one of the events. Um, he's going to be one of the um, artists that are that are doing hip hop. Mm -hmm. He was he was younger there, and um, obviously we were all younger there. But anyway, the bottom line is that the Lord introduced Himself as my healer, mm -hmm. and I began to go to church, and I began to um, I went to retreats and stuff, and and all of a sudden I was able to get up, I was able to you know get dressed in a in a way that it wasn't so so hard, and mm -hmm. so that that was the first way, the first time that the Lord introduced himself to me. When I got a little bit stronger, I left the church. I was just like, okay, this is boring, and then I went back to just drinking and other things, and then he reintroduced me. Drinking, drugs, and things you shouldn't have been doing. But yeah, not drugs, not drugs. I never went back to the drugs, but I did go back to the alcohol um, mm -hmm. at that time, and then eventually I met, I went to Puerto Mana, where me and you met. And mm -hmm. so eventually I went to that church and I, I started building a relationship with God. And um, and then I began my journey in, in being healed, you know, of, mm -hmm. of, of many, many things. And here we are. Um, that was in 2002 that I gave my life to. I, I truly surrendered my life to the Lord. Um, for those, mm -hmm. uh, now you have an amazing story. What are some tips that you can give? Uh, some people that are going through some of the same things that you're going through. Um, if you have a couple of tips, you might want to give some people because we, you know, we're focusing on a, uh, people with special needs. You know, people with special needs who are listening uh, or watching this might, might be going through the same thing. So, yeah, if you want to yeah. talk about that a little bit, I, you know, one of the tips for me that I had to learn uh, was to forgive myself. Um, I would definitely say um, for those who maybe are mad at themselves or maybe the reason why they're depressed is because of maybe um, choices that they had no control of and it was done um, to them. Um, or even maybe since we're talking about um, special needs, sometimes, you know, you're, you're just not happy within yourself. Um, one of the tips is to learn to love yourself. I had to learn to love myself, give yourself hugs. <laughs> and, you know, um, there is a God who loves us. And, and, and I would never, I would not be here if it wasn't for my relationship with God. Because even as a Christian, I fell into many times into depression. It was a, that was a cycle because that was a comfort zone for me. Depression became a comfort zone for me. And until I didn't gain a, a better relationship with God, he started helping me to to not fall into that cycle of depression and to um, hold on to him. So the tips will, one, of course, be to love yourself, um, two, to reach out to the God, you know, you know, he sent his son to die on the cross. And I mean, I, I know everyone believes in something in, in what they believe in, but I would say Jesus Christ, there's a reason why he died on that cross. And it has transformed my life and many others. I would say um, to eat healthy. You know, eating healthy, actually, to be honest with you, is a huge, um, uh, let me see, like a huge um, part of our mental. I, 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 Because I know sometimes when I eat all crazy, and especially sugar, I start going down, you know, a different, you know, my mind. So I would say, if you want tips, eat right, mm. love yourself, forgive yourself, and receive the love of God. You know, and, those are and also, also... Uh, Surround yourself with positive people oh, because that's, oh, yeah. more, well, that's more important also. Yeah, even if it's one person, have someone, uh, yes, a safe person that you can share. And no thought is crazy. It's about releasing the thoughts. Sometimes we don't, we're, we're sometimes embarrassed. Like, I don't want to say that I'm thinking this or I don't want to say I'm feeling this. There is, that's why we need the safe person or people, like you said, or a community, you know, or a group, you know, um, a lot of times I go places, I don't know anyone, but I know I just need, and I just need an extra help and therapy, you know, many times I, I was in therapy since, of, since the age of 12. No, I'm sorry, 13. I was always in therapy and I totally believe in therapy. I believe people need someone. Um, and if, if it's not working, then you try someone else. You don't have to stay stuck with the, mm -hmm. to the same person. Not every therapist is for for every person. Exactly. Um, you, you said off camera yesterday that you were um, uh, empty. Uh, you, mm. were, you were, and this is the last question. Then we'll get to the event. But you—that's okay. You you were empty. Uh, yeah. Describe 
emptiness and, and uh, how long did it, well, obviously Christianity is a growing thing because it grows within you and you grow within it. But yeah. uh, uh, why did you feel empty or why did you have to go to that dark side to um, feel comfortable? Uh, if I'm saying it right, please forgive me if I'm, if oh, I say it wrong, go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I, I totally understand what you're you're saying. Um, yes, we did talk about emptiness because um, we sp spoke about. Um, I forgot the question you had asked me yesterday, and I said, "Well, it was comparing the life with Christ um, and the life without the Lord." And I mentioned how empty. Um, definitely, I was empty. Is is when you feel this void that you can't fill, and no drugs. No alcohol, no men, no women, nothing was able to fulfill. Um, but it is the most hardest thing to admit because you don't you don't realize how empty you are until you get filled with his love. So if I can say that, even though empty emptiness and loneliness are even different, you know, because even though they may seem the same, but um I don't know, there's just a big um and maybe they are a little bit the same. But yeah, is emptiness void, is void in so the word void and emptiness in this case is almost the same thing. Definitely, yeah, because when yes, when oh man, like it didn't matter. I can I can be I can drink all day, I can get high all day, and there was still this emptiness. And in the outside, a person could look like they're having a good time, you can look happy. But it's something inside. I guess there's all of us are born with this void inside of us because I've heard it over and over by, with so many people. But Christ really fills this void, and it's and it's not overnight for me. For me, you know, um, it's a process because there's also a healing journey that we go and we. For me, I start realizing this amazing God that I'm able to pray to, to, and really experience real healing, real deliverance, real, a real relationship. Um, you know, that one day I'll see him again because, you know, this land I've, 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 as much as I love it, it's temporary. And I've, I've, I've come, you know, I'm not, I'm not the type so much to say Jesus is coming soon because I never know, is it he's coming soon or I may go to him sooner. You know, we just never know when we're going to pass away. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I would say the emptiness, um, I no longer feel empty. I mean, I, I, I remember times where I was going right before the bar and I felt the emptiness. I felt the loneliness. I felt the, oh man. And then of course, the two bar, minutes later, the bar, I mean, oh, you work, you said the bar, the bar. No, like when I went to go drink, like I can remember oh. before I'm going to go, um, like to a bar, like to go drink. Because we're talking about emptiness. Like, I, I have specific moments where I've experienced the before, feeling it, like the, the reality. And then once I have chemicals, like, like, you zone, like you forget about it. But the reality is it's there. So now as a Christian, being sober, I do not drink. I don't, get, I don't do any of that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't drink at all. Um, man, it's like to, to like not experience that emptiness or that void, it mm. is, it's amazing to be, it doesn't mean you don't go through struggle. So, so, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not saying like, this is all, but it's so different. Oh my gosh. Mm. You face things so different. Okay. So let's kind of backtrack because we want to really uh, also talk about, I mean, I mean, you have an amazing story and then you'll come back and, and do another one. Another time. Yeah. And, Thank you. Um, but I, I want to kind of backtrack and, and go forward with uh, the issue at hand, which is this really wonderful event that Thank you, you. Are, are doing in March, uh, March 15th and 16th yes. of 2024. Um, describe a little bit um, of, you know, a touch from God, your, your ministry, and then um, going... You know, why have you decided to do this event for the hard of hearing and uh, and the and the deaf and hard of hearing? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, well, it's a singles conference. It's uh, March 15th and the 16th. 
Friday is open to everyone. It's not only for singles on Friday because we have the music and stuff. The reason why, um, your question is why did I want to include the deaf and hard of hearing yeah. community? Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, I actually took, uh, I was going to school. Um, Al Sharpton had a, a the com he has a com the community, I think it was like in 149th, I'm not 100% sure. And they would give um, ASL classes. Mm -hmm. And so and, I... And what is, if you don't mind me asking, what's your degree in? You have a degree, correct? You don't have no. a college? Okay, go ahead. And I went to college. I have the degree of Jesus. <laughs> and I went to college. I was a dropout, but I did. I did finish. I did. I did land out getting my diploma at a equivalent school. But um, I didn't go to college. I did go to discipleship school in South Carolina. Maybe that's what you you know. I did go for two years to that, but mm -hmm. I. I, so go I ahead. wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to. I wanted to be a drug rehab counselor, but it didn't happen. Okay. Go so ahead. anyhow. So no, no degrees here. Just degree of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? the degree of love though. No. Anyhow. But um I so I went to this so I was taking the sign language because so I always wanted to say, how can I reach the deaf and hard of hearing community if I don't know their language? You mm -hmm. know, like I would see it in the train, I would see young people, and I said, I'm gonna learn sign language. So I did. I started going to the school. I also used to meet with um with a group of people we used to meet at Barnes and Nobles. It was a hard of hearing. It was it was the hearing and, and and deaf and hard of hearing. It was all of us and we would come together just to practice. And I loved it. I even went to a comedy show. I mean, even though I was like, Lord, I don't know what they're saying, but I'm gonna clap, you know? I was so like, they could be cussing you out, Lord, but I'm gonna clap with them, you know? I was just trying to um to get to know, but unfortunately, I stopped taking classes. And once it's a hard language, once you stop, it's not something so easy to pick up. So fast forward to this event, because that's a, year, a couple of years ago. And so fast forward to the event when I'm doing the singles conference, I, I went to a women's conference um, at a church and and there they had ASL. They were interpreting um, for the deaf and hard of hearing community. And when I saw that, I felt like this is why I'm here. I felt mm. like the Lord was like, you know, I want you to invite, you know, the ASL community. Um, they're, they're singles there too. So I'm like, so I, I asked the lady, I said, hey, do you guys, you know, can I, do you guys go to other places? And, and you know, she had mentioned that she, they were so booked and busy. Um, so they, they wouldn't have been able to do an event. And anyway, this is how I began my journey in searching for interpreters mm -hmm. you know so that's how i i just felt like god wanted me to invite excuse me um the, the deaf and hard of hearing community so we can be together um because they're single too i may not experience singleness the same but we're single so yeah mm -hmm. so let's talk about uh who's going to be at the event and so on and so forth because we got about 15 minutes left go ahead Okay, so who's going to be at the event? Okay. Oh, who's going to be at the event? And uh, well, the, the speakers that and... I am hiring, it's an amazing company. It's a Christian company. It's called Sunship Interpreters. Mm -hmm. Sun, like um, S O N, Ship Interpreters. They are based in um, Tennessee, mm -hmm. but they have interpreters all over. So I actually hired them to come and they will interpret. Even the hip hop will be interpreted, you know, amen, because that was a little bit uh, of a challenge, actually, to find those who um, do music um, in the sense of performance. Yeah, because you um, told me off camera, you said that certain, the school that you tried to get didn't, wouldn't do it or couldn't do well, it. Well, they wouldn't do in in um, the entire, they don't, they don't, they don't, but, but one of the schools did give me a list of agencies that they hired, but the school itself, because it's a... Uh, they teach, not send out um, to interpret, mm -hmm. correct? So, um, but even though I would meet some interpreters, um, the part that was a little challenging was to find those that do music. And then we did find, but they weren't um, available. So the Lord then led to this amazing company um, that we're going to have. So on on Friday, it is a, it's a worship. We're going to have some worship. And I have beautiful people from new orleans i have from connecticut i have from new jersey coming i have from philly coming 
uh, from Florida coming and um, from Atlantic City, which is, you know, from right here, the Bronx I'm coming and um, and Texas. I'm sorry. So I do have uh, uh, different uh, different people coming from different places. So Friday is going to be worship, Christian hip hop and some comedy. We're going to have some comedy. So it's a day just to enjoy and celebrate the Lord, really, and the goodness of the Lord. That's why we use Psalms 136 of how how God, how faithful our Lord has been, you know. Um, so that's going to be on Friday, you know, and um, just from, how. From what time to what time is the event? From from what time so is Friday? The... Okay, I'm sorry. From for Friday is from seven to ten. And the doors open up at six o'clock. We're gonna be having it in Carnal Spellman. Um, one Carnal Spellman, it's in the Bronx. And um I know later you put up the website where they can get tickets. There mm -hmm. is a price, um, a cost for it. And um, so that's Friday, and then Saturday is only for singles, only for singles. And so this day is the day that we bring in, we're gonna have some teachers. So myself and, an, and another um, minister of, of the gospel, we will be speaking to the women. I have another, um, two other men who will be speaking to the men. We're also, I have a priest also. I wanted someone, um, he's an amazing uh, Father Pilsner. He's going to be speaking of holiness and just being devoted. You know, not everybody is called to be married. And that's just the truth. Not everybody desires to be married. So being single also has a lot of different parts to it. You know, some um, become widows. Like we see in the Bible, Anna, she was a widow at a young age, but yet stayed in the temple all the years and even got to see the Messiah. So that was, um, you know, like I said, not everybody. So I wanted the priest to speak not only about holiness and devotion, but also the fact that, um, like I said before, not everyone is going to be married. That's not their goal. And then I have also a pastor and his wife. So we can talk about marriage. And I also want to talk about um, identity. So we also have um, two gentlemen, Pastor Lewis and Angel, and they're going to speak on um, your struggles with your identity, you know, for those who struggle with that. And then uh, and then we have some, again, music. We're going to have some of the guys come and some worship. So then that's, and we have lunch, of course. There is a break <laughs> for lunch. So that's Saturday. We're praying that um, we really come to a place of healing. Um, it's a couple of people have asked me, are you going to do like a speeding dating thing? And I'm like, no, I, I, I think we need healing. This is why we're probably still single, you know, uh, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of the listings of um, some of the acts that are going to be there? For Friday? Yeah. Was well, the hip hop It's mostly all hip hop. The, well, we do have some Spanish. That may not be interpreted because um, the interpreters I have do not speak Spanish. But um, but that's um, one of the one of the pastors. He does reggaeton, which is um, Christian hip hop in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, so and but the rest is Christian. And it's you know, all rap. and it's all ASO interpreted, correct? Yes, except most likely the Spanish. Be only be and which which mostly other people who do hear hearing people don't know Spanish either. So <laughs> that would be the one that many won't. Probably no, except those that, but the beat, the beat will be there. Something we can all feel, um, which is something also, you know, from what I've, I've heard mostly um, when it comes to the deaf and hard of hearing community, that the beats, you can, you can feel them. And that's what, because some people ask me that question. Well, and it's like, no, there's ways that, you know, like I said, from what I know, and you can, um, you can confirm that, you know, they say you can feel the beat. And then with the interpreter, of course, then they can know what is being said. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you have an amazing story, and uh, we would like to—I would like to thank you for joining me on this edition of Able Den on Air. Uh, for more information on the event on March fifteenth and sixteenth, you can go to www.atouchfromgod.org. That is www.atouchfromgod.org. You can purchase tickets. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you'll find out more about the event and who's going to be there. So that's www.atouchfromgod.org. So this has been 
enabled in on air uh, presentation, both television and radio, um, WYKR 101.3 FM, and uh, www.orcamedia.net for more information on Ableton on Air. You can go to www.orcamedia.net. Uh, and uh, just to let you know that uh, this event, uh, from a touch from God, uh, is also in association with Fordham Manor Church. Uh, for more information on their ministry, you can go to www.fmc.org, I think. Uh, it's actually it, fortamanachurch.org. Yeah, I'm sorry. org. This has been Enabled in On Air Radio and Television Presentation. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx, Able and On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.